Hi, and welcome back to Hands-on Infrastructure Automation with Terraform on AWS Backpack Publishing. Locking state. Most likely you don't work alone, and there is a team of people, or perhaps several teams, working on the same infrastructure. In this section, we'll discuss how we could reduce friction in this process. We will start by learning how to lock Terraform state to prevent the corruption of the state file when multiple people are working on the same configuration at the same time. We will then explore how to handle secrets in Terraform and how we can make our configurations more secure. Running Terraform in automation is different from executing it manually on developer's machine, so we'll look what we'd need to change in our workflow for Terraform to work on a CI-CD server. And because it's impossible to cover all there is to know about Terraform in one course, I will wrap up with some suggestions on topics which you might want to explore on your own. Before we talk about locking, let's quickly review some of the practices that make teamwork easier. We've been following most of them from the start. First of all, consistency in naming and file layout is really important. It's best to document the conventions that you have in some kind of style guide and to continuously enforce them during every code review. This may seem like some superficial nitpicking, but consistency really does prevent a lot of friction, so no sense in ignoring it. Then, of course, all code must be version controlled and peer reviewed. It also helps if you have some strategy for structuring your infrastructure repositories. In general, it's not a good idea to put everything into one giant repo, it just makes it unmaintainable. And, of course, state should be stored using one of the remote backends. In this course, we used S3, as it's the easiest to use while working with AWS resources. But there are many other backends which work just as well. The main point is to not store the state file locally or in the source control. You'll save yourself a lot of trouble if you use a remote backend from the start. Remote backends introduce another problem. As developers can now work on the same configuration independently from each other, occasionally they could apply changes simultaneously. This could lead to some pretty nasty consequences. Resources could become orphaned, or in the worst case scenario, this could corrupt the state file. To deal with this, most backends natively support locking. Terraform would acquire lock before making any writes to the state. A 3 backend, which we've been using, also supports locking, but it requires some additional configuration to enable it. Let's look at our backend code to see what we need to change. This is the same backend project that we created at the beginning of this course. It provisions an S3 bucket that we use to store all our state files. To enable locking, first we need to create a DynamoDB table. It must have a primary key named LockID, because that's what Terraform uses to manage its locks. I'm setting read and write capacity to the lowest possible, but if you have a lot of activity in your infrastructure deployments, you might want to bump this a bit higher. Let me deploy this table. Ok, now that we have this table, we can take a look at what's inside. So far, there is nothing there. Now, to use this locking, I need to point our backend configuration to this new table. I have switched to a demo project, which will provision another VPC in our account. The backend configuration looks familiar, but notice that I set an additional attribute DynamoDB table. It points to the table that we just created, which will be used for locking the state file. I will initialize the project now. And now let's deploy it. And if I refresh the table, I can see new items appearing in it. This log has some metadata, which shows who acquired the log and when it happened. After the deployment completes, the log goes away. But there is some internal Terraform metadata, which stays in the table. If I make some changes to the resource and redeploy, I will see the lock again. If someone tried to deploy the same configuration at the same time, they would see an error. In some rare cases, Terraform may not remove the lock properly, so you could use the force unlock command to clean this up. 